Hello, and welcome. I'm Zinder, and this is Heroes and Generals. It is a free-to-play game. It is both a first-person shooter game and a strategy game. And as you can see, I have a gun up there. that I named it that. That was the second name I came up with, because for some odd reason, the first name I could think of for a gun was Betty, and I was like, nope, not using it. But, as you can see, I've played decent amount. I've got my soldier up to rank 9 almost, which, at which point I can choose to become a recon. Now, as you can see here, I could become a tank crewman. Uh, may unlock light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, and tank destroyers. And the weapon type you get is submachine guns. Although switching to that role would cost me 22500 These values, they might seem high for the in-game currency, but they're not. You get, on average, about three to 5000 per mission. And if we look at the rank listing here, each rank has a base salary that you get when playing a mission. So, for example, when you first start out, you get 1,250. And with every rank, it goes up by 250 up to 5,000 just for playing at the final rank. So, you, once you reach the final rank, you're probably making about 7,500 per mission that you play. So, and you could potentially make more. You could potentially make about 10,000. And at that point, you could probably support... The, uh, you can't really call it premium ammunition, more of the ammunition modifiers. Uh, because what you do is you rank up a gun type, for in this case, this is a semi-automatic rifle, so it has a semi-automatic progression line. This is bolt action, it has a bolt action progression line. As you level up progression lines, you gain the ability to modify certain aspects of the gun. Now, you need to refill ammunition when you use it, so I'm not actually going to be using all of this ammo. Uh, well, this is going to run out, and then I'll probably have to buy more. Although I could refill what I have for that cost, which I don't, I don't want to. I don't care about the ammo enough. Uh, however, there is four other modification slots. These cost far less to maintain. They're still a bit expensive to get, but as you can tell, I managed to get all four parts. So there's the barrel, the internals, the sights, and the trigger. Now. These are unlocked through the progression lines. So, for example, semi-automatic rifle assault. As you can see, as you go up through the ranks, you unlock... This is where I unlock the Carabiner 98 Curs. And you can modify your weapons. Now, obviously, there's two different sides, because this is a World War II game. Now, when you go to select your side, they're considered the... Germans or the U.S., but the game dictates them uh, when doing objectives actually in it as the Allies and the Axis, which is slightly confusing if when it says Allies have taken something and you're not playing as the Allies. Uh, which, by the way, this game functions on a war basis. When you choose a side, you're locked into that side for the entirety of that war, which... I'm assuming a war ends whenever one side takes everything of the others. Which, as you can see, I'm playing as a Nazi shithead, and we're losing. But, whatever. Uh, this is more of where a strategic thing comes in. Uh, you can earn war bonds, or war funds. It says you get it from playing the strategic game, but I've gotten all of mine from playing the action first-person shooter game, which is where you earn credits. Now, I'm assuming you earn more from the strategic game, but you need enough war funds to purchase the base uh, squad size. Or you could spend real money, but screw that. Uh, speaking of real money, let me just show you the costs. These are in euros, so this is probably about $10 for 1400 So, it's actually not that bad. I mean, I don't know, you're probably spending about $6 or so in order to buy your first infantry team. And that's for if you just want to skip the action game entirely. My suggestion, don't. Because it'll give you a better idea of what you're doing. But, uh, yeah. Oh, and as you rank up, you have a salary from playing in the missions. I don't know if I mentioned this, because to be honest, I've screwed up this recording twice now. This is the third time I've done this, so I don't know what I've covered in this one. Uh, but the salary, and at certain ranks you unlock certain things. For example, my next rank is 9... 
and I will unlock the ability to become a recon. Uh, however, well, I do plan to become a recon, but you also get a salary which increases by 250 per rank up to 5,000. That's your participation for even playing in a mission. Uh, you get on average about 2,500-ish uh, from also playing the mission, so you're looking at max rank anywhere from 7,500 to probably upwards of 10,000. Because I've actually had quite a few missions where I've gotten almost 8,000 from it already. Granted, my current salary is like 3,000 and something, but... Uh, once you change a soldier over, I don't know if you can change to another profession and after spending the cost to do it, but as you can see, it costs a decent bit of in-game currency, but not a whole lot. Like, 22,500? That's like... five missions? Yeah, it's not really a huge deal. So... But I don't want to be a tank crewman. I want to be a recon. And these are just your standard hand grenades. There's a shovel. But I don't have it equipped at the moment, because I'm trying to keep my fatigue level lower. Uh, I do wish to uh, save up and get the Panzerstreck RPZB-54, because I hate tanks. That's the short of it. I hate tanks. They're annoying. But, uh, got your standard tutorial, which is a very basic tutorial. Uh, squad, which is for playing with your friends. And then your ranking, which... I tried to get uh, Wing Dark to play this, but he didn't really play a whole lot of it. He also didn't have a very good kill to death ratio. That's we're not discussing that. But uh, yeah, I've spent maybe two days playing this game now, so it doesn't take a whole lot of time to really rank up either. Uh, ranking up is based on gaining ranks in combat and tactical. So, defense, tactical, LMG, handgun, SMG, tank destruction, sniper assault, and all those. So, realistically, if I wanted to rank up, I would probably want to save up and get, like, the the Machine Gower 34 and use that. Although, that's kind of expensive. I've been working on my bolt action, but that takes work. And then I would need that for tank destruction and killing people in close combat is a pain. Yeah. This is my close combat thing. I'm almost it too. It's very hard to kill people with a shovel. Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. But, anyhow, uh, I'm going to get it started. And I'll meet you guys in-game. Now, I can't guarantee how long the mission is going to take. I also can't guarantee how long this queue is going to be. But I will be with you once we get in-game. Okay, and here we are. Uh, they don't always take this long to start. However, this is actually, I think, a good thing in this situation. Because it will allow me to explain some things to you. First of all, as you can see down here, GM Assault Teams... Uh, as you can see, there is two little things there in the line where it has me listed. I'm apparently in SS Boss, which is a stupid name, but... Uh, you see there's total spawns left. That's across... Oh, well, it left. That is across all of the assault teams that we have. Now, you'll see the 64 and the 24. 64 is infantry spawns, and 23 is vehicle spawns. Now, I can't see how many they have, as is to be expected. And what you do is you can select a spawn point. Now, this is kind of a shitty map because there's only this one to choose. A vehicle spawn will be right here to the left of this. You have to make sure it finishes the animation because if you try and click that, you'll just zoom back out. So, sometimes there's a spawn timer. We didn't have one in this case. And there is some temporary weapons that you can generally acquire. Uh, I'm not seeing any here. There's normally a Panzer something. Panzer Faust 60 sitting up there. Uh, let's just take this bicycle. 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 Uh, we're going to ignore A because there's quite a few people up there. 
Uh, you see the attack above A? That is because the squad leader, which I'm assuming is the up arrow with the chevron under it, uh, he has ordered an attack on that location. That little plus box there is a resupply point. It will refill your health, which uh, I'll get into that once I've taken some damage. And it will also resupply your ammo, but it takes time. And you leave yourself vulnerable while using it, because you cannot attack. So, there is... There is an enemy that was over there. He is probably going to be coming in the back door, based on the location I saw him. I hear his walking. Okay. So, I can actually pick up this weapon, if I so desire. As you can see, part of my health is flashing there. That is the health that I can recover. Now, if you take damage beyond thresholds, uh, let's see if maybe I can't acquire damage to one of those thresholds. Nope, oh, go away, explosion. Here we go. Mm. I don't want to get hit by that turret because that's a lot of pain and agony that I don't want to get hit by. But, uh, sprinting is on a stamina-based system down there on the bottom left. You can see the little white bar when I sprint there. So, it... you don't have unlimited sprint. However, the goal here, this is just your standard cap and hold thing. Uh, I might do multiple episodes on this to try and show all the different game modes. And I apologize for the volume, but I like being able to hear Steps. Track down where gunfire's coming from. Oh, like that. I heard it somewhere to my left. There he is. There we go. I have killed Dr. Lovedraft. Oh well. I never read those books anyhow. Now, I, let's get somewhere a bit safer so I can show you this. I like how they handle the map. When you bring the map, it's actually something you hold in your hand. Uh, as you can see, we have a spawn point down there. That's that little icon uh, below C. You can't really see the, uh, the fact that it says C because the icon's there. And uh, if you right-click, you can actually zoom in. So you can get an idea of where the special weapons and the refill things are in your general vicinity. Which is very handy, and I've used that to save my ass to refill my health a few times. Uh, I suppose we will... Oh, oh. So, like I said, on this map... Oh, here we go. I can respawn in the Kubenwagen something. So this is what it is. Uh, there is quite a few different types of vehicles, but this is what I have available to me on this map. And it has a resupply box on there, so I can actually use it as a mobile resupply point. Oh, and I've ranked up driver. Okay, so... Uh, I don't really like driving around in vehicles too much, because... Uh, they seem to be more of a massive target. Oh. 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 We won. Yeah, that wasn't exactly a good example. That was a bit of a raffle stomp. But, yeah. Uh, and here's what I was saying before about... You get about 5,000, at least. Or pretty close to it. That was a quick mission, so that was actually a pretty respectful amount of credits. And here's where I've been getting the war funds... If I can look at this, I can actually look at the information I had. So I had, in that mission, I fired nine shots. I hit f with five. I got three kills and one headshot. And I have ran 443 meters in that mission, and the it lasted four minutes. Uh, I think I'm going to find us... Oh, I realize it went back. I'm going to find us another mission. So I'll be back shortly. And here we are in another mission. It's... Sadly, pretty much the same thing we just did, which is disappointing, because there's uh, airplanes and stuff in here. Uh, here we go. Here is the special weapon. One of them we get. Oops. This is the Panzerfaust 60. It is a one-shot rocket launcher. It will not one-shot a tank, unfortunately, but 
I like to grab it because, well, first of all, I can press 1 to bring up my regular weapon, and it will drop it on the ground so I can pick it back up if I need to. Although, a lot of times, I'll just shoot it at a player. Although, you have to be in this in order to shoot it, I'm pretty sure. That said, I've never fired it outside of that. That's part of the reason why I don't know. But, hopefully, we don't really encounter any too many tanks. Uh, they do have a tank division and a tank destroyer division. Uh, if you see the the little overly extended line bit thing, that is the tank, and then with the X through it is the tank destroyer. Uh, unfortunately, all we have is three infantry assault teams, so hopefully some of our guys, at least one or two, have an anti-tank weapon, otherwise we're going to have a very bad day. That bastard. Thinking he can ride a bicycle past me. Uh, I believe I hear the sound of a tank, which is very unfortunate. Oh. Okay. I, I was out in the open, I'm not gonna lie, that was a bit sad that he didn't see me. Then again, he was also riding a bicycle through the open, so... Guess he wasn't the brightest of bunches. Please don't let there be a tank sitting up here waiting to shoot me in the forehead. So let's just lob a pipe grenade over there. There we go. There is currently zero enemies within range of the capture point. And thus, well, apparently I'm the only person from my team that's standing here to cap it. Oh, there's another one here now. It's that guy. He just realized he was a little bit out of range. Okay, that, that's going to be a problem. Ow. Fuck. Bone pro. Now, if you saw the little reload thing there, there's actually an amount of time it takes to reload, and if you look at my uh, health bar there, you'll see that I'm down to about a quarter and it's locked there. That's what I was talking about with thresholds when taking damage. Uh, basically, when you drop below a threshold, you need to go to a resupply box in order to get your health back up past that threshold. And if I can get out of here safely, back over to that box that is behind me, I will show you just how that works. So it was just down here. Now once I get close, it should pop up the icon. Hello? Oh, I didn't get there yet. So you go up to it, you hold E. As you see, we go into this prone situation and my health is recovering. Now let's go... Now, there we go. Everything is refilled. And I'm going to head back up here because I hear a vehicle. And therefore, I believe... Oh. Pipe bomb! I think he's dead. Is he dead? Oh, there's somebody within range of the capture point. Fuck. Damn. Oh, and of course, the guy that killed me was the guy with the rocket launcher chilling over in the tree line. Damn you, game. Uh, oh, yes. I will take it, Cancer Faust. Thank you very much. Now, there's almost always a bicycle sitting outside of one of these. So you don't have to run everywhere, but of all the vehicles that leave you open to being absolutely annihilated, the bicycle is the biggest culprit. But it's better than walking in some cases. Although I don't suggest riding it too close to combat. 
because of how much of a target you are. So they have taken B, but we are in the process of taking C. Uh, the total capture is listed up there on the top left as the colored bars. They don't really have any progress, whereas we have 10%, eh, 15, something like that. Rough estimate, of course. Uh, we are currently capturing east. Oh, no, we're losing our capturing east. I'm assuming all of the teammates that were over there are now dead. So I could go over there. You know what? Screw it. Let's go. Let's go have a look see at C. And this is a slightly different map from the previous, as you can see. Where are you? Oh, there's one. Oh, there was a guy with a machine gun behind the tree, and he was waiting for me because I fired off the rock. Oh well. But. It's a pretty interesting game. It can be really fun. Or it can be really aggravating. But that's just any shooter. Sometimes they're fun. Sometimes they just piss you off. Because I've had some really questionable moments. Where. I've been sitting behind a dirt mound and tried to fire. And passed it. You know, like the gun was farther away than it was from that tree. And it impacted the dirt, and then I got shot in the head. You know, those kind of weird moments that are just kind of like, that's kind of annoying. I have yet to see a single game that's done things perfectly, so. They're doing pretty well in the uh, hit, hit registration, usually. Fortunately, they're not always doing well in it, but they're generally doing Ping definitely plays a large factor in it. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, guy with the rocket launcher, please hit tank more. I've noticed that one of the best ways to survive tanks is to literally run up to them and hide on the tank. The guy got out of his tank and I tried to kill him so that way the tank would basically be out of commission. And then if we took the point, we could actually steal the tank, but that takes time. And leveling up your rolls and equipping the proper combat badge, however, would allow you to steal a tank up to 75% faster. And it, unfortunately, the second combat badge slot, the basically the benefits badge slots, uh, it requires you to have Veteran, uh, which is a purchase thing. It's kind of like, you know, a subscription model or whatever, like other free-to-play games have. You get bonuses to your leveling speeds and stuff. And that is a bit stupid, although it's not quite as bad as Worth Under's premium planes. sadly bothers me because, in my opinion, that makes War Thunder a game that should be good. It's just irritating because you end up with these people that are... their planes are just a little bit better. So... There's three of us here, which is a decent attack force considering we're technically behind enemy lines. The range on... you have to be to the little radio things is actually a pretty small range. And in the cases of ones that are in buildings and the other maps, you just have to be within the building. Okay, so let's just get this guy in. Apparently I changed my mind on the pipe. It's a mistake I've been making lately where I try and switch too quickly after throwing it. Because once you throw the pipe bomb, you will be on your previous weapon, or the weapon that, that you'll be on your pipe bomb still. Unless it was your last pipe bomb, at which point. Oh. Ow. Pain. Agony. Uh, I hear a vehicle. Did we get it? Okay, we got it. Now, 
is a good time to make an attack on B, because a lot of their forces are going to be focused on probably getting C back, because it's the closest point to their spawn point. Uh, they do, however, seem to have a good number of people tied up in A, although they seem like they might be dying. Other the fact there's a tank there. Trap. I could go prone and be fairly safe, but in this case, I actually want to bait them into shooting at me because I want to actually retaliate at them. I mean, yeah, it's an objectives game, but I actually, you know, like playing the shooting aspect of it quite a bit too. But I'm gonna go refill my health while I have the opportunity. And then I'm going to probably go back over and start screwing the seat. Oh, well. I want that opportunity. That was an interesting place for that guy to just be chilling. Just sitting behind the rock. Uh, screw the bicycle. I'll run it. It's not that long of a distance. So this is more of how long the, the missions generally go on. Uh, yeah, I'd like to defend point B, but unfortunately, I'm a bit far away from that. Uh, hopefully, we have somebody taking care of the... Uh, that has a... Panzer equipped. That's taking care of the oh. tank. Now, keep in mind, this is a beta. I'm sure you know the fact that sometimes my gun seems to fire twice. That is unfortunately a bug that exists. It seems to fire once, so it doesn't have any real, you know, impact. But it is annoying. One would think that it might have APB's shooting system. Oh, this is... This is all kinds of stupid. Myself like an idiot. Oh shit. Damn. I was hoping my teammates in the tree line would take more advantage of that situation. You know, the fact that I had a bunch of people trying to shoot me. But oh well. Uh let's be on the no! Two people can ride on a bicycle, and I wanted to get on the back of that, but he just kind of drove off. I sadly see quite a bit of that, where people get in a vehicle, and especially ones with guns on it, and they'll just drive off without getting a passenger. And it's just kind of like a complete waste. There we go. We are the Bicycle Attack Force! We are going to claim things with our bicyclades. Oh, okay. Teammates. Like I said, I like to listen for, for gunshots. There's death going on over there. And the last thing I want to do is crest this hill on a bicycle. Oh, that didn't sound good. That sounded like a Oh, yeah. Oh, I hit him. Oh, ready. Uh, the tank is smoking, but it's not dead. But generally, whenever it starts smoking, or in rare cases, I've seen them on fire, uh, people will get out of them, at which point they're neutralized, and I consider them a dead target. And as when I play any shooter game, I I like to look at my own score, especially when I'm doing well. Oh, that sounds like a tank. Oh god, that's... that That's a tank. Hell? Can't I tank, please? Uh, somebody's within capture range. That's... I got up to 
have a look around and I just saw an M5A1 steward staring me in the face. Now, this game's way of handling invincibility on spawning, it actually is a, uh, makes you invisible for a temporary time, which is also unfortunate because you end up with these situations where an enemy might be spawning directly in front of you. You know, that, that's not very common, but it does happen. And they have time to look around and find you and get ready, and you can't even see that they're there. Now, there is a few restrictions in place to try and stop people from spawning, but they generally require action on the part of the people playing. Oh, hello. Oh. Oh. I'll take that headshot. That was a glorious headshot. Sorry, just kind of concentrating. It's actually surprisingly hard to concentrate and play a shooter game and talk at the same time. Especially considering I'm the kind of person that's constantly looking at every part of my screen, trying to pay attention to everything that's going on. We are unfortunately losing this battle. I killed somebody. That right there is unfortunately something that people do a lot. I knew he was dead, so I just, uh, I just put one more shot. Always want to make sure they're dead and not prone. Oh. Uh, I, I heard it bouncing at that point. It was like, well, fuck. It's unfortunate that I haven't been able to spawn any vehicles, but unfortunately our entire team is all infantry, whereas they have a tank division, so in some ways you could actually say that this match was imbalanced from the very beginning. And that does happen, but let's face it, war was never fair in all cases. throw all my grenades. Oh, killed him. Good. Good. I got defense points. Oh, and kill to death ratio does not determine how well you're actually doing. You'll notice that there's a score thing, and score establishes your contribution. It just so happens that generally people that are doing well kill-wise also are doing well score-wise because a lot of the times they know what they're doing. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, you, you pump that tank a little bit. Uh, that's not good. Uh, I'm in a very, very bad position right now. Hello, my tank friend, and goodbye, my tank friend. Uh, everybody else, you can go. Oh, oh, never mind, tank's dead. I have a very bad feeling I'm about to get shot at. Okay, I see nothing. And that is why you're not just trying, you know, whenever you do that, whenever you just charge with your car to kill one person, even if you do kill that one person, which by the way, cars are pretty easy to avoid, uh, what you end up doing is you cost your team a vehicle spawn, because you die and completely waste the vehicle spawn. They're not unlimited. You can't just throw them away like that. If you throw them away as quickly as you throw away your life, your team is going to run out of vehicle spawns very quickly. And it is very bad for your team 
in the entire match if you do that. All right. Now we are losing pretty heavily, and we're not likely going to win this match unless we pull something out of our ass. This is actually a really fun match. Suicidingly head over towards C. Probably get shot at by a machine gun or the engine I hear running over there. Is that another tank? I think that was another tank. I think that's also a tank that's getting exploded. That guy is looking at his map. Which I also think is really cool to tell if somebody is looking at their map. So you know if they're actually like aware, paying attention. Okay, go. Oh shit. Ah. Unfortunately, at that range, if that guy would have lost, he should probably just quit the game. Because I'm gonna be honest, if you're using a fully automatic weapon at that range and you lose a fight like that, especially when you have to jump on me because he came up from behind. I'm sorry, but first-person shooter games might not be something you should be playing. I, I know that might sound very insulting to people, but I hate to say it, you're the kind of person that helps your team lose because you're not contributing anything. I hate to sound very negative. Oh, just telling it like it is. Teammate, first of all, you can throw a grenade while prone. And you'd be surprised at the number of people I see not using their grenades. I think it's because they're limited and there's no there's not really a good explanation on how you actually get more. Which is actually really simple and you can set it to automatically do it and fight. Which is what I've done. It's the same way you can set it up to auto refill and auto repair your Weapons. Oh, that was a tank shell. There it is. We're gonna capture this. I just want to make sure I get capture assist points. Uh, I don't think I got capture assist points. There is this tank. Very good chance the tank might be exploded. Uh, we are, however, going to lose very soon. An unfortunate truth. Am I being shot by my own? Oh no, there it is. Uh, unfortunately, if you're sprinting around, I'm sure you noticed. Oh, and this can happen occasionally, but the mission's over, so that didn't matter. Uh, if your assault team loses its lives, which unfortunately it always seems like I'm the last person on my assault team left alive, uh, I have noticed an issue where sometimes it it won't be able to find an assault team to put you in, and you will literally just get kicked out of the match, seemingly with no reward for playing it. Uh, I don't know if the match itself has to actually end before you receive your rewards, and that's why you don't actually get anything shown to you, but it's kind of annoying. But... I wish I would have gotten a normal match, one was with planes and all of that stuff, but uh, it didn't happen. But I did get quite a bit of war funds out of that. Look at that, 1,857. And I had a pretty high score. 391 is actually a considerably high score, so I did really well that match. But, uh, yep, that's pretty much a basic rundown of heroes and generals, and if you want to see more about it, I'll, by all means, I'll try and find one of the larger matches. They can sometimes go on for half an hour or sometimes even more, and uh, I'll play through one of those for you. I'm going to call this good, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.